The chart that I like to look at for these is the 15 day, 15 minutes. So after it goes on its run, then I like to look at how it's consolidating and. OTC versus listed. So what does OTC even mean? OTC means over the counter. And these securities are traded via dealer network as opposed to a centralized exchange. So when you put in a, an order to buy a, a NASDAQ stock, it goes through an electronic market maker and it automatically executes your trade. So, you know, NASDAQ stocks can have a lot more uh, manipulation and a lot more moves that are uncalled for that don't really make sense. And with the OTCs, it's a lot of uh, market makers manually entering your orders, putting them on the bid, putting them on the ask. So they're just a lot more fluid in my opinion. So why do OTC stocks have a bad reputation? A lot of people on Wall Street, they have way too big of accounts, you know, way too much capital to even trade these stocks. These stocks are really just meant for, you know, old people that want to, you know, put two, three grand into a penny stock because they think it's going to be the next Amazon. And everyone says they're a scam because, you know, they don't know how to take advantage of the scam or the promotion, and <clears throat> why do I believe that OTC stocks are easier than NASDAQ? Well, like I was saying, OTC stocks are a lot more slower, and NASDAQ stocks, they just, they do a lot more weird stuff, and shorts are a lot more involved. There's a lot more fundamental importance in uh, OTCs, and, or not OTCs, NASDAQ. And the daily chart for me always tells the story. And with NASDAQ, the daily charts are always kind of crazy, but with OTCs, if you ever notice, like, the daily candles make a lot more sense when it comes to buying breakouts, shorting first red days, and <clears throat> first green days. The, the daily charts make sense, and they don't really make sense with uh, listed stocks. So why do I believe that beginners should start with the OTC market? I think that beginners should start with the OTC market because you know, they're, for small accounts, they're probably the best thing to trade because they're the lowest price usually and, you know, you can make really fantastic percent returns. There's no after hours or pre-market trading, so it's low odds that you get caught in a massive gap down, like you could potentially get caught in an offering with a listed stock and if you're all in on a small account, you, you know, you're down 50% and you can't, even, you can't even cut your loss because the stock's just going to immediately gap down and that's really scary to me. <clears throat> what are the best times to trade OTC stocks? So the best time of day for me is, you know, late day. That's usually where I like to buy after the stock has proven itself. It has held up. It's doing good volume. It, it has all the criteria to, you know, continue further. And then, you know, I like to take profits in the morning because that's when the second wave of buyers come in. That's when you should be selling. And then the best times of years to trade OTC stocks from what I've seen so far uh, the end of the year and the beginning of the year. You know, during the summer, it's been really slow, and it's the same thing as midday. Like, midday slow, the summer slow, the start's good, and the end's good. And then, what are the, what are the best OTC patterns? So, my favorite OTC patterns, I'm going to go over right here on this next few slides. So, penny stock breakouts. This is specifically talking about stocks that are priced between a cent and ten cents. Um, not dollar stocks, not $3 stocks. I want to specifically talk about the really low price stocks. And what I'm basically looking for is for the stock to go on a run and then kind of stay near its highs and go sideways. And what I'm looking to capitalize on is that secondary spike, that multi-day breakout is what I'm looking to take advantage of. And what will make the move more explosive is, you know, little, little to no overhead resistance so there's less sellers on the way up when it does break out. You know, there's a catalyst, there's massive volume, and then ideally it's in a hot sector. And all these things that, <clears throat> all these things would make the breakout way more explosive. And the chart that I like to look at for these is the 15 day, 15 minute. So after it goes on its run, then I like to look at how it's consolidating and how the run was the, the first run that it made. Like, was it clean? Was the stock faking green to red every morning? Um, did it, you know, not hold its, hold its highs, did it not hold the review up all day? I want the cleanest possible stock, you know. Ideally, it spikes, it goes sideways, it spikes, it goes sideways, it spikes, like the stair-stepper pattern that Tim always talks about. 
so you can stay long during it and you're not gonna get faked out. VYST, so <clears throat> this stock was awesome. As you can see, um, it made an awesome run up from basically nothing to five cents. And then for five days, the stock went sideways. As you can see on the 15 day, 15 minute, the stock went sideways. Especially these last few days, you can kind of see that the range got tighter. And every single day, the stock got more and more and more tight. And then on Monday, the stock released a press release. And then as you can see in the morning, volume started to come in. And you know that's when I took a fourth of my position. I bought 50,000 shares right out of the gate and I was risking green to red. And then as the stock breaks out, you know, I add another 50,000 shares and I'm still risking green to red, but now the win percent's higher because now it's a confirmed breakout. And then when the stock comes down, and then as you can see those three red candles right there, the stock held the breakout perfectly. And then when it started to perk off the breakout, that's where I'm adding my full size and I get up to 200,000 shares from about a 636 average and I change my risk to that level of consolidation because if the stock breaks down below that, I don't want to be long anymore because it's proven that I can't hold the breakout level. And then from there, the stock, you know, had a really nice slow grind all the way up to about 10 cents that day before the first harsh pull. And, you know, I sold the stock out into pieces and into strength and I got out for, you know, about a two cent gain. And the stock went all the way 16. So I left a ton on the table, but I can't be mad because I made 4,400 and I was risking a very small amount. As I slowly sized in, I'm pretty sure my final risk on the stock, you know, I had 200,000 from a 636 average and I was risking like 6.1 or, you know, a very small amount. So I was still achieving great risk reward and that's really all that matters. AOYI, this was probably my favorite setup of the entire year. As you can see, the stock had three beautiful green days on the daily chart, and if you notice too, it was on increasing volume, which is really nice. I like to see the stock, as it keeps going, more and more volume to get into the stock. And then something that I use to tell myself, and <clears throat> to tell myself if the stock has a good potential of breaking out again is for the stock to hold half of its spike. So for instance, this spiked exactly from a penny to three cents. And then the stock came down and held two cents for two days perfectly. As you can see on, you know, the uh, 15 day, 15 minute, there on Monday, you know, it came down to two cents and then perked off a little bit and then closed kind of sideways. And then the second day, you know, it didn't break down. It held again and then kind of went sideways into the close. And then when the stock had a morning spike on Wednesday, that's when I get interested because the stock has proven to me that it can hold half its spike the stock can go on a three-day green streak, um, as you can see from the first run. So that's when I started, you know, nibbling a little bit and buying some shares. Near the late day there, when it kind of broke over high day, you know, I put a little bit on just to keep it on watch for tomorrow. And then the next day it had a small gap up and they dropped the press release. And as you can see there on Thursday, massive, massive, massive volume came in. Absolutely astronomical volume on the daily chart. As you can see, the stock traded like 75 million plus shares. And that's just amazing to me. So then, as it started spiking, you know, I, I added into my position and I got up to like 500,000 shares from a three cent average, which is about the breakout level. And I was basically just risking break even on it. If it failed to hold the breakout, I was just gonna cut. And the stock kept going and I sold that for almost four and a half cents. And as you can see, it went all the way seven. So once again, I left a lot on the table, but I was still happy with my gain on this one. I made about 6,700. Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I wanna share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge and become my next millionaire student.